Well, I'm Lisa Stover with LifeSite News reporting from Boise, Idaho, and I'm here today with Sean Foyt, um, who's in California, who's with the Let Us Worship Movement. Um, Sean, thank you for coming on the show today. Of course. Glad to be here. Well, congratulations first on so having the number one album on, YouTube, on um, iTunes. That's really exciting, and that's just truly awesome. Um, so for our viewers who aren't maybe familiar with you or Let Us Worship, can you share a little bit about just who you are and how Let Us Worship even got started? Yeah, so I've been spending probably the last uh, close to 20 years uh, really uh, in the nations of the world, mostly the persecuted, um, darkest, kind of hardest nations. I've launched missions movements and prayer and worship movements. But I've been really focused on on the nations for a lot for a number of years. Um, when the pandemic happened, uh, you know everything closed, the borders closed, and um, uh, you know we weren't able to get on a plane and really go anywhere. And I had just finished a, a congressional run uh, in California that I didn't win, and was just kind of like, "What am I doing, God? What do you have for me?" And uh, and then the churches closed. And when the, then the church is closed and then uh, these crazy uh, tyrannical politicians and governors started releasing some insane uh, uh, rules and regulations. One of them in California being that you could not sing in church, which was so outrageous. And that really is it's something flipped inside of me. Uh, having been to so many persecuted nations um, and, and experiencing this, I was like, this is not happening in America. And so anyway, we really uh, we mobilized uh, uh, leaders and pastors together on the Golden Gate Bridge with 24 hours notice uh, just to worship, to, to declare things over our nation, to prophesy, to stand up and make a bold, courageous uh, stand for freedom of religion, but also just for revival. We need revival in, in this nation. And so that's kind of where it began. And that's where it was birthed. And then from there, it just kind of went viral. started to hold these events how many events have you held i know you've been around the nation you've had huge huge numbers coming out so what has that response been yeah i mean it started out with 400 on the golden gate bridge the next day in uh in uh, huntington beach was a thousand a couple days later in san diego was five thousand on the beach um and we've we've held about 50 gatherings since then um, in cities all across America. And we've really focused in on cities of strife and calamity cities where there's been rioting and pe places that people are riding off in America, like Portland and Seattle and Chicago. Uh, we've really, really felt the call, just like we did in the persecuted nations. We felt the call to go into those places and bring the hope of the gospel and worship. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen, you know, some of the mission trips that you've been on prior to 2020. And you have seen a lot of different nations um, who don't necessarily have religious freedom like America has had. And now it seems, you know, religious freedom in America is at stake. Um, and so what's kind of your take on that and how much how much of, you know, is at stake for religious freedom in America for you? Well, I mean, I, it, it, it's if you talk to any of the leaders and pastors and, and we have so many friends, you know, on the on the ground in these nations, we've helped plant churches. I have long term uh, long term missionaries right now that are my team that are in Iraq, you know, that have been there since ISIS, since ISIS came on the scene. Um, and so we're very familiar with these leaders. We're very familiar with what they deal with. Um, I've seen it, you know, persecution up close firsthand. I've been in North Korea, Afghanistan, Iraq, a lot of these places. And it starts, it begins with a slow chipping away is what all of these leaders and pastors will tell you. It, it doesn't, doesn't come out on the surface as you can't practice your faith, but it starts chipping away with little things. You know, you can't gather limited number regulations around it. And a lot of those pastors are very alarmed 
I'm alarmed because they're alarmed. You know, they're the ones mm -hmm. telling me, hey, listen, this is how it started for us in Russia. This is how it started for us in China. And what is happening in America? And these are the messages that I'm getting, which is causing me to like be, you know, really in a part of our, our message is the church has to wake up in this season. Right. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, it's clear we're in the middle of a spiritual battle. And the only way we're going to win this is through the power of prayer and through worship and really giving it to God and saying, look, we can't do it, but you can. Um, and so, you know, 2020 has just been an insane year and that, that slow chipping away. I was thinking about that this morning. It's like boiling a frog in water. You know, if mm -hmm. you right away, take everything away, of course, everybody's going to freak out, but it's that slow fade, that slow, um, yeah. you know, really taking away little by little. And a lot of people who aren't seeing that, a lot of Christians out there even and churches who are saying, you know, it's uncharitable for me to, you know, you know, defy these regulations or anything. So what's your message to Christians out there who are feeling like they need to just bow out and, you know, give up and just be okay with it. And eventually the government will soon, you know, give us back our, our religious freedom yeah. at some point, right? What's your message to them? Well, I think there's two layers to this. There's the uh, biblical theological layer, which, uh, you know, we have to answer the question, do we fear God or do we fear man? And are we willing to take a stand just like they did in the early church, just like they do all over the world to break the rules because we want to honor God? Um, you know, first and foremost, that's our calling. So that's the biblical theological. The church has been worshiping for 2000 years through pandemic, through persecution, through hardship, through strict regulations. They haven't stopped. And it's just not time for us to stop now. Secondly, you have the U.S. Constitution, uh, First Amendment protection um, that ultimately, as we're seeing in the courts right now with the Supreme Court ruling in New York and another Supreme Court ruling that just happened in California, we are guaranteed the right to gather. We're guaranteed the right to worship regardless of a pandemic, regardless of what's happening. And so we're we real. But we really have to fight to 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 maintain those freedoms. You know, um, we become lazy and lackadaisical, uh, then they will be chipped away at you know, because there are there are powers and principalities that do not want America to remain free and to really do not want America to remain propagating the gospel to the to the ends of the earth. So there's two layers to that question. There's a biblical theological one. And then there's the there's the governmental U.S. Constitution guaranteeing our freedoms. Right. And uh, you were just had, you know, the the D.C. Uh, let us worship event and life site was there covering it. Um, and it's clear. I mean, you look at the numbers, you see people's enthusiasm and willingness mm. to stand up and just worship. Yeah. Um, and that message of, you know, let us have our religious freedom. Let us worship to me is so yeah. powerful right now. And are you feeling like as the numbers have grown um, at mm. all the different, some different events, do you feel like Christians are starting to rise up more and more? And it's also time for the church to not be afraid of being weird. You are a peculiar people. You're strange. It's like one thing I want to tell the worship movement. Just don't try to be too cool. Stay wild. I, I always reference the, my favorite Billy Graham quote, you know, when a courageous man takes a stand, the spines of everyone else are stiffened. And mm -hmm. so I think the more that we go to these cities, the more that we, you know, these are a, something I really want people to understand is these are heavily local church, local pastor hosted events. These are put on by local churches. These are help mobilized by people on the ground. Um, it's not us just coming to cities and saying, hey, we're going to come. And, you know, it's us being invited into these cities to help pour gas on the fires already burning. And I think that, you know, when we leave, what we're beginning to see is courage being restored to the pastors and the leaders that are saying, you know what, the people are with us. Let's open up. Let's take a stand for the gospel. And that's really our prayer is that it would start a, a movement of boldness and courage across America. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, I think God is truly using you and all those who are in the Let Us Worship movement you know, as leaders to, to push forward in this spiritual battle. Um, and it's, you're clearly warriors in this. Um, but at the same time, 
you're also so joyful amidst it all. Um, so could you just share a little bit about what it means to be a joyful Christian witness today and in 2020? Well, I, you know, I, there's that off, you know, obviously there's that verse, you know, for the joy before him, you know, he endured the cross. I think that, you know, that joy, we have to have joy to endure what God's calling us into in this season. Um, that's one element of it. I, I think that, that, that we have to ask the Lord and really get baptized with that joy, just like, you know, the, the church around the world does the Chinese Christians, I spent a lot of time in underground church in China. They're some of the most joyful people I've ever met in my life. They just carry the joy of the Lord. And I think um, in America, we, we need to recapture that, that sense of joy and, and wonder and expectation. And, you know, the other thing is that w- when we carry that, uh, even in the midst of trials and tribulations, it's such a great marketing piece for the gospel. I mean, we if there's one thing I'm really on a tirade uh, to see obliterated in America, it's grumpy Christianity. Uh, it's just such a bad, bad reputation for what Jesus came to, to give us, especially in this season right now, you know, leading up to Christmas and Advent and this season right now where we're celebrating the gift of Jesus. We have to be people that carry the joy. That's how they're going to recognize us. Right, right. Absolutely. And that, that's how they'll want what we have, right? Um, So what's your message to believers who have lost hope, who are just ready just to kind of give up or who are just tired and and hopeless? Um, My message is to get with people that have hope, Um, find a hope center, you know, whether that's a church or come to a gathering we're doing, do something that can break you out of the rut of your, uh, of your hopelessness. The other thing is turn off the pessimistic negative fear mongering news, you know, that's a lot of us are, are, you know, it's, there's an agenda from the media, from big tech. I don't want to go into that too much here, but there's (laughs) just, there's an agenda to, to really subjugate us to a certain narrative. And yet that's not, that's not the narrative that the Lord is writing in this season. I mean, my kids are going to look back on the season of 2020 and they're going to remember revival. They're going to remember thousands of people getting saved, getting healed, getting baptized. There's a story that God is writing and he's waiting for us to plug into it as believers. So that's my encouragement is shut off the noises that bring negativity and fear. You know, get in the word of God, get in the presence of God in worship, you know, gather with other believers that carry hope. And and, and it's amazing what it'll do to you. Yeah, that's amazing. So do you guys have any upcoming events? Um, in the coming weeks oh, yeah. or yeah. What do you have coming yeah, up? Yeah, we're, we're ending, we're ending 2020 in the most epic way imaginable um, in down in Los Angeles, California on Azusa street. And so we're going to be down there in this historic epicenter of revival from the early 1900s worshiping outdoors. It's going to be wild. We're going to ring in the new year. And I, I feel like it's not just the ending of a season. I feel like it's really the launching into a new one. And so we're really excited about that. And then in January, we're going to be in Texas, Florida. We're going to be back in California. And, the, you know, God's just opened some amazing doors. And, you know, stay in tune. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Jo- join us on social media and you can see all the updates. Yeah, absolutely. So where can people find more about you? What's your what are your social handles or what website do you want people to go yes. to? Follow you? So you can go to our YouTube page. It's just I think it's Sean Foyt. Um, same thing with Twitter, uh, Parler, uh, Instagram, just S-E-A-N-F-E-U-C-H-T. Um, you can also go to letusworship.us. Again, that's letusworship.us. And you can find out about what's going on. You can donate. You can sign our pledge uh, to stand up against these crazy tyrants trying to silence our voice and, and join us in the movement. You can, um, there, you know, there's ways you can keep in touch with us via text email, all that good stuff. So we'd love to stay connected with you guys. Awesome. Well, we'll know that we'll be praying for you. I'll ask all of our viewers and readers to pray for you guys as you just embark on this and continue. Um, but thank you so much, Sean, for your time today. We're just so blessed to have you and, and just your, your, your words today. So thank you so much. Honored. Thanks so much for having me. God bless. Really